This is Twit. Apple's Craig Federighi said it was a long road to Apple's multitasking. This Getting is uh, his interview with here. Andrew, yeah. Andrew Cunningham and Ars uh, Technica. Why yeah. did it take so long? I, it was, there was a lot of stuff with her. It, the interview is really, really good. And it's, it's substantive where he's basically saying that the capability, the, 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 the distinction he was making between Mac OS and iPad OS wasn't uh, theological in nature. It was that the performance of the iPad is such that it's not going to be, it's not going to be able to keep up with multi-touch and what you would be doing by ni- manipulating windows. Also the hardware of the iPad for the longest time, was not going to be capable of running multiple apps in the way that you uh, that someone who he, interacts with a desktop. He also he, he, said he, Mac users were more tolerant of latency. <laughs> which well, but, I that, but, was but that makes sense when you when, because <laughs> again, you're never, you're never, yeah. exactly yeah. you're not directly manipulating something on a mouse. screen. Yeah. He, he made say again. This is why I like that interview. The, he, the substantive point that we he said that we set a goal for ourselves that. This kind of multi-window multitasking means four windows on the on the main screen, four windows on an external screen, and if we can't get all that working at the same time, we need to keep on developing this, both the hardware and the software. So it's not just simply, hey, we don't want to make the iPad co- because like the Mac because we have a dogmatic exclusion. He was making the case, at least again in this very what he knew was a public forum, uh, that there were technical reasons, and we wanted. Here's what our goals were, and we were not able to meet those goals until Apple Silicon, until until the most recent app, Apple Silicon, and the most recent everything. Yeah, it's it's a. I mean, the original iPad multitasking was kind of. Uh, or at an earlier time, Basic, you remember yeah. it was li- it was limited to very specific hardware, and part of that was because they were using. Uh, chips that were not as as uh, powerful as the m series and uh and later and as well as uh not having enough ram and yeah. that they have now so that's part of it my understanding also that's my cryptic when i say my understanding we all know what that means which is i can't tell you how i understand it but i understand it yeah. is that they they embarked on a multi-year project to completely rewrite the windowing interface yeah. and the what what this is not is a modification of what has come before they that was around for a few years and they realized they needed to start from the start and just do it right and so they they threw that away that's gone and what they have is an entirely new multi-windowing model that's inspired by the mac that can use modern apple silicon processors and the increase in in ram in in the general environment now that wasn't there before and build something that uh works great And, and having used it for a week like it works really really well they did a great job with it so it really is one of those interesting cases where they cared enough about a multi window on the ipad to not just keep patching what they had built which was a compromised system but to admit like yeah we just got to throw this away and start again and so they had a team that just has been chunking away for a while in the background and uh this is what they've done which is basically bring mac windowing to the ipad and uh like and not not only can you put the windows everywhere and you can put them off the side if you want and all the things you just expect on the Mac, uh, but it's got expose. It's got all the tiling features they added to the Mac last year. So, and they're all bound to shortcuts or to keyboard shortcuts. So you can, you know, what is it? Globe shift left arrow and, and the window that you're in goes automatically tiles to the left half of your screen, or you can tap and hold or click and hold on the green button and you get a whole menu of different tiling options. Uh, you can do globe F to toggle in and out of full screen like it's the whole thing like they yeah. just did it and yeah. dropped this, it on the ipad and said this there is it what is Fed- federighi told uh, andrew cunningham at ours we've discovered many many optimizations we re-architected yeah. the windowing system it's we new. re-architected the way yeah. we manage background tasks background processing that enabled us to squeeze more out of other devices than we were able to do at the time we introduced stage manager right Cunningham right. also says stage manager still exists, but it's an optional extra multitasking. It's, it's what it is on the Mac. It, yeah. it's stage manager on iPad now. Stage manager on iPad used to be how you did multitasking. Now it's just an option to manage Windows if you want to, just like it is on the Mac. And it has nothing to do with the fundamentals of the window management, which, yeah, as as he said, it's a, it's a rewrite. They just, they put it yeah. together. Uh, and then he mentions background tasks. One of my other favorite announcements uh, of iPadOS 26 is the fact that you've got the ability now, because this was, this was one of my complaints about Final Cut, right? Was they're like, yeah, we did Final Cut and don't, don't leave the app when you export. <laughs> yeah. 
because it'll fail. Um, and like on my Mac, I can start a Final Cut export and start and then Same check my mail, right? But you can't they do that can't on the down, iPad. Can't download in the background. Yeah. So so they did this thing and they did it in a smart way, right? Because the, their, their concern is that on the iPad, especially, you're not going to be thinking about the fact that there's some app in the background that's chunking away at something and killing your battery. And so it's for it's for finite tasks tasks that have an end that were in that were initiated by the user and then if you go to the background it pops up a little live activity and it, it's not just final cut exports and and 3d renders but like a big file copy in files will do yeah. that too and so you don't have that moment of like i'm copying a file but i can't leave right <laughs> like because yep. and it feels so uh, so old and silly right because this thing is incredibly powerful as a computing device and yet i've been able to switch to another window while my mac was doing something since mm -hmm. the 90s so yeah. uh yeah it's they, they did a lot i mean it's very impressive what they did they seem to have finally embraced the idea that let the ipad not just like be its own thing but take stuff for the mac and it's just not a big yeah. deal if if windowing is good on the mac do it just you know don't try to pretend like you need to put a a weird spin on it for the ipad you could just do it yeah and there was a, there was also the problem of uh not all mac apps third-party apps are designed to react well to being in an arbitrarily sized window uh one of the big things in the in one of the developer videos this year was uh, changes they're making to ui kit that uh, basically tells developers hey look in in the past if you haven't made your app responsive to uh, to radical to uh, uh un unspecified screen sizes we've tried to help you out by putting you into a container that would be appropriate for your app we're not doing that anymore so your 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 app is either not going to work or it's going to look like hot garbage. So you have to start changing your app so that it can be it can sit in an arbitrarily sized container, which is again so a lot of it. Apple is one of Apple's great strengths is to be able to dictate something to its developers and make it stick. That's not something that Google can do uh, when this when it makes a big change to Android. But Google, if Apple says, look again, here's what it's going to be like. You can either have your app stink on ice and look like it stinks on ice. Or you can play nice, do what we've been trying to get you to do for the past two or three years, and be ready for the for the upcoming folding iPhone, which we can't actually directly mention, or, and right. be ready for resizable apps on the iPad and on the Vision Pro. Uh, so yeah, a lot, lot, it's a like like Jason said, it's a big, big, big change, and like I'm glad to see all this specific information that this is not simply a dogmatic. Uh, uh, opinion that we are right. not going to make the iPad like the Mac because the Mac is we don't want to make a toaster a toaster a toaster fridge it's, it's like uh, that which seemed odd when Tim talked about that many years ago uh, we're not asking for a toaster fridge we're asking for like a modern tablet based <laughs> machine you make it a Mac or an iPad but it shows that this is uh, that whatever that fit whatever influence that might have had in the past that was no longer operative and they really were working very very hard to move mountains to make sure that this happens seems like a simple change <laughs> finally oh god they've listened to me after all these years like no they're actually it took a long long time to make this happen and, and i don't think the mac's going anywhere but i don't think that they've ever protected the mac from the ipad i think it's a matter of figuring out what parts of the mac they want to put in the ipad and how to do it effectively and everything else because i still think that apple views the ipad is the more modern version <laughs> sure <laughs> and so and so the mac is the, the mac is there and they're more continuing control. to develop it but it's it's yeah, I, I still feel like somewhere there, there's a little bit of, like, well, that's the legacy platform. I, I think you know, I, I think there's a lot less of that than there used to be. There was definitely a time when right. that was absolutely what they thought. But I think it's I think it's the reverse, Alex. I think that they have overprotected the iPad from the Mac for a while. And and they're like, well, we can't just do what we did on the Mac. Let's do it differently. And with right. windowing, you're seeing them, you know, the windowing on the Mac's pretty good. Maybe we could just do that. And and so they yeah. do it. I, I, I would say, to Andy's point about, about kind of dogma, I, I feel a real dropping of dogma. Yeah, with mm -hmm. the iPad now where they're like, you know what, if Mac windowing is good and that's what people want, we'll do it and we'll make it good instead of it being like, well, we're going to be precious about it and kind of take it three quarters of the way and leave it there where nobody's happy. Uh, they're like, <laughs> no, we'll we're going to go all the way. And, and it's the thought struck me last week while I was writing one of my stories that um, the big winners here, big winner here is Apple. I feel like for the first time, the next time they do a round of iPad Pro releases is not going to get the same story they've gotten for the last 
eight years, which is, well, the hardware is nice, but the software just isn't good enough and you can't use it. And, and uh, their software is letting down the iPad. That has been the narrative for almost for basically a decade now, since the iPad pro was first released in 2015, um, a decade ago. And I feel like they've skated away from a lot of that this time. I'm sure there'll be people who still rehash that narrative, but like, I, I look at what's in iPad OS 26 and I think, Oh, for the first time, I feel like the iPad OS, or first time in a long time, iPad OS uh, is software that lives up to the hardware, and yeah. that's I a great. Know it's, that's going to be so good for them is, yeah. to not have that criticism. I mean, there'll be other criticisms, right? But I feel like the <laughs> idea that the OS has completely let down the hardware, it feels like isn't so much the case anymore. Well. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. If you enjoyed this little snippet of our programming, make sure you check out the full Mac Break Weekly. The link is right down there.